Hey guys, how's it going today? Um, I'm gonna go through five different things that I see people do a lot that you're really not supposed to do. And this might be able to help you out in the future, but I wanna show you a few things that are pretty common that I see happen a lot of times, and it's what frustrates people when they're welding. Number one, you need to have a clean surface for your ground. And if you're looking at this table right here, it's been painted, It's uh, it's got a little, uh, gray paint on it and probably some rust. So what you wanna do is take you know, a flap disc or a grinder and just clean it up. And then when you put your ground on there, you should have a good, a good ground right there for your surface. Now, a little trick that I've learned over the time, if you are in a spot where you're on a piece of rusty metal and you can't get a good ground, um, what I like to do is, um, let me turn this welder on real quick. What I like to do is, let's say you're welding on a body panel on a car and it's a rat rod. It's rusty. Um, there's really nowhere to get a good ground. Stick that baby down on the frame somewhere. And if you're in a hurry and you're not gonna grind it because you don't wanna show it, because it's kind of funny when you're building a rat rod, you don't wanna grind the rust off your car, right? You wanna leave it there. So what I like to do is I just take it and if I have to, I'll weld just a little tack onto the table or onto the vehicle or whatever I'm welding with rust on it and I'll marry the ground to the table. And then you've got, you've got your ground inside of the metal. So if, if things get weird and you can't get a good ground, and this is, just, this is just what I do, this isn't what is probably in a textbook, but I'm gonna give you an idea of what I do welding on these rat rods. Okay, number two. Make sure that your workplace is always clean. Now that you got a good ground here, you wanna make sure that your workplace is clean. These little BBs that fall off your weld when you're welding, okay? This could be your worst enemy, these little things right here. Because if you're laying out something, say you're laying out um, a, a wrought iron fence, okay? And you're gonna lay down some uh, square tubing on here and you need to butt your corners together. Okay, I've got, I've got a couple pieces here that I cut on the saw before we started here so I could show you this. But you got these little, from welding all over the table, it turns into a wreck. So say you got this right here and you can kind of see that it's doing that. And then you try to butt a piece up to it. You know, it's even these little BBs right here. So let's move this one. Let's say this BB's there. We try to put it in here. You don't notice that. I can see it right here that you're not very square. But let's say you tack that. Okay. All right, once you get it to that point, Let's say you flip this thing over. I mean, look at the, look what that little tiny BB did right there. And that, that will lead into a bigger problem, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. I've got a stone wheel on here that's a little more aggressive than the flap disc. And um, like what I like to do is go over the table and I'll show you real quick on cleaning off all the little welded bungs on here, okay? So. When you're doing this, keep it flat. Try not to dig into your table. Just run over it like this. Okay, get you a good solid work area. This is just some other stuff. I'm not gonna be welding there, so I'm not too worried about it. But you wanna clean that off and get, you can feel if there's, if there's any little dingleberries still on there. You wanna make sure you get those off. Um, along with that, a lot of times, like in my shop, my tables are used for everything. I could be using it for welding. I could be building a transmission. I could be changing uh, the bottom end of a motor on here. Uh, we could be doing the differential in the rear end. And what happens with that, let's just say that a bunch of 90 weight poured on this table. Once it gets into this table, it's gonna cause a problem. You don't want a bunch of oil in your table. It could cause ground issues and it could come up into your metal and cause a problem. So what I like to do is, you know, you can take thinner, brake cleaner, carburetor cleaner. Any of this stuff dries pretty quick. But I just spray a little bit on the table and then just wipe it down like this. And that basically kind of brings all the oil out of the table. I got some right here actually. And you can see it kind of eating it up. So you want to get your table clean and wipe off all that grease and oil that's in the table. Once you've exposed the metal, it's gonna attract the, the, uh, the splatter from your weld a lot easier because it's clean and it'll wanna, it'll wanna weld to it. So 
What I always do if, if I'm really laying something out that is gonna you know, cause a problem with the little, the little dingleberries, I call them dingleberries when they come off your welder. Um, what I like to do is I could either take your nozzle dip. So the dip that you put your nozzle in is, a, is, a, is like a little uh, paste. You can put it on a rag and you can wipe the table with it and it'll actually you know, keep stuff from sticking to it. Or you can just get some of this anti-splatter um, weld spray and you can just lightly kind of hit your table with it like that if you want. And that'll kind of keep it from sticking too. So any of the little dingleberries that come off will bounce off now instead of stick to the table and it'll keep your layout a lot better. Okay, number three. We're kind of gonna go back to number two on when our table was dirty, okay? So I'm gonna show you what happens when your table is dirty and it's inconsistent and you're trying to say, say you're building a door frame for a, for a door and it's gotta be square. It's gotta be nice and flat. And you might be having to weld something off of here and this all leads into a chain of bad events. Okay, number one, we're gonna weld this thing really quick, but we're gonna try to weld this without burning a hole in it, because now you got this big gap, it's not consistent, and then when we get done with that, I'm gonna show you how this is gonna screw up your grinding, okay? So let me weld this really quick. On thin wall tubing like this, you got this huge gap, it's crooked, you're gonna burn holes in it. Okay, so you wanna make sure that these are tight. Right now I'm gonna turn the heat down on this welder a little bit and see if we can get a pass in there to close that up a little bit. All right, so it looks like crap first of all because you can't get a nice flow because first of all, you got too much of a gap um, and with this 065 tubing, you gotta be careful if you're running 035 wire. This is probably more set up for an 030 but a lot of guys run 035 because it's a good, well-rounded wire in the shop. So what you got here is you look on the back side right here, this gap right here that you can see is in this one right here is gonna be hard to fill in. So what you have is now you're gonna have to try to grind that out. Let's say you wanna finish it right, right? Well, what a lot of guys do is they grab their flap disc right away. This is super hot. So what they do is they start grinding with this and this is glued in. And as it gets hot, it starts coming apart. So you wanna wait till this cools down, but I'm gonna show you what not to do, so I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm using an old one. Once you get to grinding on this thing. All right, I see this mistake all the time. So what's happened now is you've grinded whatever material was left in here down to almost paper thin there, trying to even it out with this one. Okay, so the first thing that happens is if you're any, any, if it's in any moisture or anywhere, this is gonna be the first piece to rust out right here because there's no material left in it. Not only that, but let's say you take another piece of steel and you know, you're gonna weld right here or something. All right, let's turn it this way, it's a little cleaner. But let's say we're gonna take this piece and weld it right here well, you don't know that you got a piece of 120 wall here that's down to almost paper thin material. Okay, the fourth thing that I'd like to talk about that I see happen a lot of times, and um, a lot of times with guys that are just beginning on welding and stuff like that, um, you know, they got a chop saw and they cut a piece of square tubing and it leaves kind of a burr afterwards. Like on these ones here, I cut these on a wet saw, but even on my wet saw, it still leaves, see this little piece of metal that it doesn't quite knock off all the way? Okay, even if you wanna kind of back and forth that and tear it off, let's just say, let me show you what this is. So what it is basically is at the very end of the cut, it just bends it over, okay? Cause it gets so thin on the saw. Um, a lot of the, uh, like a stone saw where you're cutting with a wheel, it'll leave a burr on the end. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you clean them. The reason why is like, here's one right here. Let's say you, you're in a hurry. You lay that down on the table, you put it there you're almost in the same problem you did when you had a dirty table. So make sure your joints, and this works on round tube, it works on square tube, anything that you're working on, you wanna make sure you clean those off. And you know, an easy way is to make sure that you have a flap disc on your grinder, put your glasses on, and um, clean that up. Just give it a quick little, quick little hit like that. Okay, once you get those cleaned up, 
you want to make sure your material is clean too because a lot of times these come from you know they come from uh the like the steel yard with what they coat them with is fish oil and a lot of these got oil on them and um you know you want to clean them i mean i don't get that crazy about it you know what i mean like i just kind of wipe them off a little bit if they seem dry i'm going to go with it but it's always nice to take a rag and um, some thinner and clean all your square tubing before you start clean it in the 20 foot sticks if you want or if you're cutting them all down into multiple pieces you can take a rag and some thinner and clean them really good um you know i keep a little cleaner around in case i need to clean them up but for right now i'm just going to show you how this goes together so what we got here opposed to the other one is we got clean material we got a clean table now we have a clean joint and as you can see on thin wall tubing you want to make sure that your joints are really tight because if they're not you're going to blow through you want to make sure that you have material to weld on and usually on this stuff you want to go a little faster you want to burn a little faster on light wall square tubing so make sure that your table's clean your material clean your work piece is all cleaned up so it's nice and your joints come together real good okay. okay number five the one thing that i see all the time that drives me crazy is guys will take their little 110 welder um, and they'll try to weld a piece of quarter inch or three eighths or a piece of quarter inch two three eighths say your buddy george comes over and he's like hey man i want you to weld a gooseneck hitch in the back of my truck and because he thinks you have a welder that that's going to work well it doesn't you need a bigger welder to weld with something with more amperage these little one tens are not made for that in desperation though if you have to weld something quick with it make sure you preheat it so you can get good penetration so i'm going to make a pass right now with this the way it is it's cold you know this is with the wire that's in here i really can't turn the machine all the way up because it just blows the wire apart this is the 025 wire it's really little we're going to just try to make a pass in this and see if it does anything and then when we're done we'll preheat the other side and see if it'll lay the bead in there a little bit better yeah you can see that it just doesn't have enough heat in it there's not enough there the wire is just it's blown apart it's it's terrible you don't you don't want to weld anything thick with this material it's it's it, it doesn't have enough volume of wire in it it doesn't have enough heat and even if you turn the heat up on this you don't have enough wire so we're going to try to preheat it see if we can get something a little bit better than that out of it only in an emergency these little 110 welders are not designed to weld stuff this thick it's just for little stuff but if you're going to do it you might want to put a little heat in it before you get started this is probably this is probably more than enough because I'm, I'm using some really, really, really tiny wire. So let's see if it'll flow in there. I don't know if it will, but we'll try it. It's still struggling. And you know, you can see the well will get a wide, little bit wider at the end. Um, but what it's doing is it's, it's just annihilating the wire. It's, a, it's an 025 and um, it just doesn't want to get in there real good, but it does have a little bit more penetration than this side right here. You can see it's got completely no penetration. This one at least gets you in where you need to be. Okay guys, so here's our plate. I mean, it's, it's kind of ugly, but worst case scenario, if you're out with a 110 welder, you had to drag it, you know, 200 feet out in the middle of nowhere, have a torch with you, take a little butane torch, something, preheat it so you can get good penetration i mean with that little wire that's in there it's 025 it you know when you turn these machines all the way up it just blows them apart blows the wire right out so this is actually got a little penetration on this side so i'm just a little trick that i wanted to show you to avoid just absolutely welding on a cold weld with little wire with no no amperage um but i'm gonna be doing some more little videos on some of these little tricks and things that i've learned over the last 30 years of welding also, I'm doing a course. Make sure you click the link below and we can share with you what's coming up and how we're gonna do it. But if you're interested in learning how to weld from going from not knowing like what kind of gloves to wear or shirt or anything to actually welding, 
make sure you click the link below. We'll explain everything to you and we'll notify you guys when we're ready to get started. So if you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, we appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, there might be a bunch more other little tricks coming up, so stay tuned.